360 degree reality, Yo guys, what's up and welcome to another tutorial on Action Studios and in today's tutorial we are gonna be creating this very cool smoke, uh, flat smoke effect in After Effects and yeah, I already made this little cabin thing in Illustrator a few minutes ago um, which kind of looks like this just made out of basic shapes, nothing special uh, with just a plain background and um, yeah one thing if you want me to make like tutorials for illustrations, simple illustrations like this one then just comment down below if you want that but anyways I'm not gonna show you how to illustrate this uh, today I'm gonna jump in straight to After Effects so uh, once you have the uh, thing imported, whatever you want to add the smoke to, for me it's the cabin, um, you're gonna make a new composition, press and control N, and this is already preset for my purposes, uh, so 6 seconds and this resolution should be fine, so OK. And um, now before I'm gonna start I'm gonna show you this composition right here which is the smoke composition looks very complicated but it isn't at all because we only kind of need to create one layer one of those uh, plenty of shapes and duplicate it and edit this one and then duplicate it just a bunch of times so um, first things first just create a random rectangle doesn't matter how it looks like and then go down to rectangle path and set this unconstrained proportions and set this to 40 by 40 okay and then I'm gonna set the anchor point to the middle using the pan behind tool uh, which you can select by pressing Y on your keyboard and then just drag this one into the middle and press control so it snaps and then using the align window just snap this to the middle uh, okay now select the layer again press P for position and uh, here I'm just gonna change this to some round number just because it kind of bothers me to have some random number in there um, okay and now the first thing we're gonna do is actually animate the um, position from down here to all the way up there so make a keyframe go all the way back in the composition and just drag this up to I don't know 200 should be fine okay mm -hmm. that's cool but not exciting at all that's why we're gonna jump into some expressions now um, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to effects and expression controls and select the slider control okay now we have this slider here which doesn't do anything but um, it will soon because we're gonna create a, uh, an expression now by pressing alt and pressing the stopwatch here and now we need to define x which equals the x position and y which whoops which equals the Y position. Oh, and don't forget to make the semicolon in the end of the lines, so as always. And then we gotta define the wiggle. Uh, if you don't know what wiggle is, uh, the wiggle expression, there are a bunch of tutorials on YouTube and uh, all over the web. So basically what it does, um, it makes random movements uh, using two values the first one stands for how many times per second and the second one for the actual value it should uh, wiggle um, so uh, the whole thing looks like this wiggle and then you get to type in 0, uh, 0.5 because we want it to move like uh, one time every two seconds um, and then we're gonna uh, big whip the slider control okay and close the whole thing make a semicolon again and then last line we need to uh, just define the two values here which is going to be first the wiggle value and second just basically the y axis 
Okay. And now nothing should have happened. Okay, perfect. But if we drag the slider control up, it should move on the X axis randomly. Okay, now you can see it makes these kind of random wave movements, which is cool. Um, just gonna undo that and make a keyframe in the beginning and go down on the timeline by one second. And then hmm, change this to 200, I guess. And then we should have this cool wiggle expression thing here, but in the start, uh, it starts at the, um, yeah, in the middle of the composition. And actually, uh, I'm gonna press U and drag those two keyframes uh, somewhere around one second. Um, and why am I doing this? This is because this is the first time we're gonna see this uh, part of our smoke um, because we're gonna mask out uh, the first, the, the bottom two clouds, as you can see here. Um, and the position spreading should start here. So we get this kind of V shape, you know what I mean? Um, and let's say I, uh, I would have those two keyframes in the beginning, then um, we would have a very weird popping smoke effect right here instead of a smooth transition out of the chimney. Okay, but enough, uh, talked enough. Um, now we're gonna jump in right uh, in, now we're gonna jump right into the next step, which is gonna be the scale property. Um, and as I already said, this should make kind of a V shape because you know, the smoke kind of spreads as it uh, gets out of the chimney after some time. Um, so I'm gonna make a keyframe here and a keyframe in the end. And then I'm gonna unconstrain proportions and drag this up to, let's say 200%. And in the beginning, we can actually set this to 70. Okay, that looks good. And uh, now we also want to add some excitement into the scale property. So I'm gonna go back to the position property and just copy the whole expression here. Uh, but you know, pressing this little arrow, you can expand it. And then we're gonna make the expression for the scale property too. And just paste it in here. But now we need to replace the position things here with scale, whoop, scale and scale. And uh, this second property we're gonna replace with um, the amount probably uh, 80%. Should look somehow like this now. Okay, yeah, adds a bit more excitement, uh, wiggle liquid thing. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for the first layer. And now we only need to duplicate this one and go down on the timeline by a little bit. And then we need to figure out how much space there should be between those two clouds. Okay, which is 12 frames. And the second cloud should be way bigger. As we can see here, it's always one small one and one big one. Okay, now uh, let's go to the scale property again and set the beginning to 120. And in the end, okay, nice. Need to drag it back again. In the end, it should be at probably 800. Should be, should be fine. Okay, now we gotta drag this back 12 frames again. And now we have our first two cloud elements, smoke elements. And with those two, we're just gonna take those two and um, then press Control D for duplicating those and drag them further on the timeline until you can see they kind of barely touch either, each other. Uh, now select all of those again, uh, pressing Control A and then Control D again and then we need to do the same thing. Perfect. And then once again, select all duplicate 
and um, let's see. Okay, that's perfect. And for the last one, we need to select all of those and um, kind of drag them all to the left until the first one hits the top position, which should be somewhere around, just around now, okay. You can see this first thing hits this position and now uh, as we have all of those selected, duplicate once more and um, do the same thing with all of those. Drag them all the way to the bottom. Okay. Nice. And now, as you can see, we already have this uh, pretty complicated looking composition created out of um, just one layer actually and duplicate it a couple of times. And, uh, and now let's see how we are gonna create this liquidy cloud thing effect. Uh, for that, I'm just gonna drag the composition one, which we just made into our main comp. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna mask it out, as I said before. So we're just gonna see, uh, yeah, pretty much everything, but these two bottom cloud because uh, they are just popping out you know what I mean <clears throat> so just um, just select this composition layer and select the rectangle tool and make a rectangle like this okay then align it to the top of the chimney. Okay, uh, seems good. We can even make a little bit of space in between there. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And now we need to create this cool liquid round looking effect, which is pretty easy actually. Now, uh, you may be wondering why am I not using Matt Choker? for this uh, upcoming effect. Um, this is because Matt, Choke, Matt Choker, I think it's Matt Choker, um, makes a black background and white uh, clouds. And we would need to key that away again, which wouldn't be clean. Uh, so I'm, I, I found a, a pretty, pretty easy technique for this. So uh, for that, you're just gonna go to effects, obsolete and add the uh, fast blur. And then also go to effect color correction and select the curves um, effect. Now um, the fast blur you can drag up to. Hmm, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't matter now. We need to uh, edit the curves first. Now uh, select this RGB thing and click alpha. Now we need to make. Um, this curve as steep as possible and the, it should be as steep as possible just in the middle okay like this and you can already see this kind of makes this awesome looking choke effect now you can uh, adjust the fast blower effect um, however you like it you could even drag it up all the way to whatever 100 and then we, we, we would have a more realistic smoke effect, which isn't bad at all too, but um, I kind of prefer this flat looking cloud effect, which looks like this, pretty cool already. And the cool thing about this is um, that it's random all the time, it doesn't matter what we change. So if I go into this composition and uh, I select some of those in between clouds and also some of the big clouds and duplicate it. They will split at some time. Like, like for example here, uh, you can see there's one and there's the other one because it's random because it's a wiggle expression, which is pretty cool. We can do that a couple times like here too. Mm -hmm. 
duplicate and then one time in the end to Okay, and now let's see We should have an even more dense look and even way cooler look actually because I think this looks pretty cool and the last touch uh, last final touch uh, is gonna be set the opacity to uh, whatever you want it um, I kind of prefer it at like 60% because it's the right amount of subtle you know what I mean uh, let's preview this what the hell okay doesn't this look awesome kinda well Anyways, uh, if I don't forget, the the project file uh, could be in the description, maybe even this uh, uh, cabin right here, even though the project file is pretty unclean, because I made it in like five minutes. Um, but anyways, if this tutorial helped you, then I would appreciate a like a lot and even may subscribe, because, uh, you know, stay tuned for upcoming tutorials. There are gonna be pretty awesome tutorials soon. So, you know, stay tuned and bye.